Meeting is officially called to order. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment to uh, particularly welcome Lucy Co. Once again, a major shareholder in ELQ. Why, thank you, Ned. That's very, very sweet of you. Hello, everybody. It's so great to be back here. You know, it's just so cozy and familiar. It, it's really like I never left at all. And Mother Quarterman, Lila, this room, it's wonderful. It's just fabulous. Well, thank oh, you, dear. Brother. <laughs> oh, could, could I get the name of your designer, perhaps? Oh, it was Jenny Eckert. Ah. Uh, I recommend her highly. She has a wonderful sense of... Lila, uh, could we get on with it, please? Oh, for heaven's sake, Edward, there's no need to bite my head off. Well, I'm with Father. Let's move along, shall we? Okay, item one. The conversion of the petrochemical plant into a recycling center and the construction of a toxic waste incinerator. Proposed and submitted by Damien Smith. Now, as we all know, these proposals, especially the incinerator, are controversial. So, in an effort to mitigate everyone's concerns, I have looked into the costs of educating the community and the benefits of a toxic waste incinerator in Port Charles. Now, I'm convinced that the results will not only put us on the road in winning the PR battle in town, but in this room as well. Catherine? In conclusion, I can sum up everything we need to do in one word. Schools. We let our children lead us into the future. Mm-hmm. By our noses. Straight to the poorhouse. Oh, Edward, for heaven's sake. You won't like it any better there than I, Lila. Catherine, thank you for a very illuminating presentation. I think you've uh, addressed and possibly resolved everyone's reservations from a PR standpoint. Don't bet your stock on it. Now, moving on to costs, I would like to uh, merely refer everyone to the balance sheets. Uh, ELQ is more than capable of sustaining the necessary capital outlay for making this move. I'll tell you what really appeals to me is the opportunity of creating all these local jobs. Which, in turn, will help with any PR problem that will continue to exist no matter what we do to combat it. I think we're ready for a vote. As stated in the bylaws, in the event of a tie, as CEO, I will act as the tie breaker. So, I guess it's time to uh, hop on the bandwagon, because this gravy train is moving out. And Monica Quartermain voting a collective 22 percent. Um, Alan, I assume that you have Monica's proxy. I do. And despite rather mixed emotions, our voters nay. Ah, good boy. Edward Quartermain voting 9.5 percent on his own behalf and 9 percent for Tracy Quartermain. Nay. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucy Coe voting 4 percent. Yes. Ned Ashton, 8 percent. Yes. Lila Quartermain votes nay, accounting for 9.5%, which leaves Damien Smith with 38%. Yay. A tie. As my feelings on this matter are clear, this motion... Wait! Oh, forgive me for being so dramatic, but technically, Damien Smith only controls 37.5%, not... 38. 37.5? What are you saying? Oh, dear. What's happened now? I guess he was just too busy to mention it, but Damien sold 0.5% of his stock to me. Damien, is this true? You sold stock to Catherine? Yes. It's true. And you never bothered to tell us? Catherine approached me shortly after I acquired the ELQ stock. Evidently, there was a situation with Scott Baldwin. Uh-huh. Uh, situation? You mean that tiny little incident where you built him out of a quarter of a million dollars to supposedly cover his... Your dead husband's death, right? Exactly. Uh, Lucy, thank you for the clarification. Uh, 
See, I'm not too clear on the details, but from what I gather, well, Catherine felt guilty about the money and wanted to make restitution in some fashion, hence the request to buy the ELQ stock. Now, I, I think we can all agree on how persuasive Ms. Bell can be when she puts her mind to it. You see, I, um, I happen to need immediate cash to help set up shop here in Port Charles, so I sold her the 0.5%. It seemed equitable at the time. And since then... In all the conversations and the meetings, you never saw fit to inform us of this, uh, this minor development. Forget about the meetings and conversations. What about all the times we sat together over drinks as friends? It never crossed your mind that this was information that I might want to have? In hindsight, I should have mentioned it. But you see, I... I was taking into consideration the sensitivity the family has to outsiders having just gone through it myself so well frankly i didn't think it was an issue because catherine agreed that i would vote the stock is this true catherine well actually yes it did happen exactly as damien said i think you'll find everything in order hmm. well it appears to be good and as long as I'm here, I think that I'm capable of voting for myself. No, no, no. Let's wait just she a minute. She can't just jump in and come. Lucy. Well, if that is your decision, Miss Bell, how do you vote? Your vote, Miss Bell? Nay. Nice. That's my girl. Well, the tally is 50.5% against the toxic proposal. The motion does not carry. The meeting is adjourned. Oh. I'm disappointed, Catherine. I thought you were smarter than this. I had to vote my conscience. remember introducing the two of you at Oktoberfest, and you pretended you didn't even know her. Well, isn't this typical of a witch like that? I mean, she just sailed in here and tried Excuse to change me. all my... Po <sighs> Can you believe this? This is so typical of a person like that. How well do you know her? I don't know her at all. Well, have I got an earful for you. Well, 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 Damien. Any more surprises? Because if there are, you better tell me right now. Let me tell you something. Since I've been around, we've come this close to taking control of ELQ, and no blonde piece of fluff is going to be anything more than a minor setback. And you've managed to make it onto the winning team. I suggest you try and stay there. Let me suggest that you remember how you got here in the first place, pal. Stop it, both of you. You know, there's nothing that Catherine would like more than to see the two of you at each other's throats. I don't think you want to give her that satisfaction, especially... When there is a very easy way around her. What do you mean? Why is it men are so obtuse about things like this? Ned, Catherine is after you. Mm, of course, she is after every rich man that crosses her path, but you happen to be the man of the hour. And I think it'd be very easy for you to wrap her around your little finger, what, in maybe five minutes? <laughs> Why, Lucy? I didn't realize you had such a head for business. Why, Ned? There's a lot you don't know about me. I'm just bursting with surprise at the 